offensive. I mean, I have offended I don't know how many people by sticking to my guns over this particular type of topic. And it's basically just this. It's that God is who He is. Always. What God wants is always a direct correlation to who He is, and He wants it all the time. He's nothing but good. The condition of the world at this point does not fully reflect what God wants. Are you offended at Jesus? Why couldn't Jesus heal some people? We're answering the big question, why is it not working for me? Why is it working for that one? It's not working for me. David prayed that. Looking at the carnal world and judging God through somebody else's quality of life. We put him on trial all the time in the context of a broken world rather than who he's defined himself to be. What is the wisdom he has been given and how can he perform such miracles? Isn't this the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us as well? Aren't his sisters here with us as well? And they took offense at him. Do you see what's going on here? You may not recognize it right off the bat, but what's happening here is carnal thinking. It's logical thinking. You know, we've, we hear the word carnal and we instantly think evil. Carnal doesn't necessarily mean evil. It just means physical. When you're thinking carnally, you're limited to your own resources, your own earning potential, your own intellect, your own background, whatever it is that you think that you can or can't do based on you because you've reasoned the situation through your own limitations, that's carnal thinking. We think carnal thinking is, boy, I really want to sin really bad right now. It's that too, but it's, but it's limited thinking according to your own resources, which leads to death. That's what they're doing, carnal thinking. We do this. All right, remember, talking about healing, but what does it mean for you? There's an aspect of God you're not experiencing that you're believing for. I know it. You know why I know? Because you're human. And so what we do is we look at Jesus and we back away from him with all different types of logic and reasoning based on what we think. And for them, it was, hey, we know this guy. There's his brother. There's his sister. There's his mama. That's what it looks like. We start to rationalize and logic, apply logic based on what somebody else went through or what we went through. And we build circumstantial theology based on the, the, the broken world. And today we are going to have an incredibly high opportunity to be offended or to break that offense and soften our heart toward him and let him be God in us. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is without honor only in his hometown among his relatives and in his own household. So he could not perform any miracles there. Interesting language, right? Except to lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. All right, so here's a question. And this is actually debated within scholarly theology. And that is, did Jesus limit himself and choose not to do miracles? Or did they limit his power? In other words, their, the capacity of their heart, did it limit what he was able to do? Did he choose not to do the miracle? Or did, could they not receive it? No, it wasn't Jesus choosing not to heal because of the lack of honor. It was his power was rendered ineffective in those people's hearts because they could not receive what he had for them. Offense leads to unbelief. Unbelief limits the power of God from working through their heart. This is what offense means. Scandaliso. It means to be a stumbling block, to judge unfavorably or unjustly of another, to be displeased or indignant. The, the root word for this word is scandalon, and it's the movable stick or trigger of a trap, which, you know, the rabbit or little animal trap that's the box and the stick that holds the box up and you got the strings tied to the stick and when the rabbit goes in there, you pull the stick out. The stick is the trigger. The stick is the scandalon. It's the thing that triggers it. And this is, we see this. And some of you experience this and respond this way. And I know that many that I have given these kinds of answers to, when they say, well, why didn't this one get healed? And why do some people get healed and some people don't? And you say, well, when Jesus encountered this, he talked about people's unbelief, not his will or God's willingness. And then what happens? 
All of that is this word that we're very familiar with in this day and age, people get triggered. That's the concept. You get offended, people get triggered. You trigger people when you give them the truth. A trigger is a negative emotional response. When you stand in front of someone who, for whatever reason, is challenging the idea that God wants people 100% healthy, 100% whole, 100% provided for, 100% of the time, no questions. What do you do? Do you get triggered? So then what we do is rather than just saying, okay, I'm feeling this, but I'm going to hold to who God really is. In God is only health. If Jesus paid for it, it is not just what God wants. It is legally ours now, always. Do you get offended at God's promises? Why couldn't the disciples heal some people? When they came to the crowd, a man came up to Jesus and knelt before him. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy on my son. He said he has seizures and is suffering terribly. This is legitimate, okay? This is somebody that's hurting, a legitimate disease. He often falls into the fire or into the water. You know, just to kind of bring this home a little bit, this is a man, maybe a farmer, something where he can't watch his kids all day long, but he has a son that has seizures, and he's legitimately afraid that his son might fall into the lake or pond and drown. I mean, you know, this is a real situation that this man is experiencing, and he's approaching Jesus. If you had the opportunity to go to Jesus and ask him, why did my son not get healed? Why did my mother not get healed? You'd get the same answer. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And here's Jesus' response. Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation. Jesus replied, how long must I remain with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed from that moment. Afterward, the disciples came to Jesus privately and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? You ever been there? You ever been to the hospital, prayed for somebody, and they died later? I have. It hurts. Afterward, the disciples came to Jesus privately and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? Because of your little faith. Or in another translation, because of your unbelief. He answered, for truly I tell you, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, where does your mind go? Do you get offended? Do you get triggered? Do you say, well, why, but this, but that, but I, but I, but this, but that, but I? Why couldn't we do it? Because of your unbelief. That's incredibly offensive. Incredibly offensive. Or you recognize it's who he is. He ain't going to change. There's something going on with me. Same story. After Jesus had gone into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Jesus answered, this kind come out except by prayer. This kind, kind of what? In context, looking at the picture, when Jesus, what does he attribute not being able to cast it out to? Unbelief. Your unbelief, their unbelief, limited them from receiving from me. Your unbelief limited you being able to help them experience it. The issue is unbelief. This kind of unbelief comes out by prayer. There's a whole teaching in the body of Christ that says that the more you pray and the more you fast, you get more power over higher levels of demons. That's, that's made up. That's nowhere in Scripture. He stripped all principality and power, raised you above everything. His name is above everything, his authority, and he has shared his authority and power with you. Now, if you take the time to fast and pray, might you walk in more power? Yes, because you become more confident and you become more receptive and sensitive to the Spirit of God working through you. You might see, but you can't judge that externally. you got the same, it's the same Spirit that works all in all, okay? The way to get unbelief out of your heart, if you're having trouble receiving or if you're having trouble ministering, in your heart, there's some type of blockage. But I fiercely believe that who God is, is good. You put God under a microscope, there is no darkness, there is no disease, there is no sickness, there is no ill intention toward mankind, there is no confusion. He is pure and holy, and holy 
desiring for people to experience His quality of life and His nature. 